faith is the stepping stone to all religions. However, the faith can be of two types. One is blind faith and other is faith or trust through inspiration. Blind faith is based on imagination caused by belief. Believing things without rationalizing its reality can be called blind faith. For example, number of religions believe in an almighty God that created the universe and looking after every being and thing in the universe. But nobody has seen such a God. He is nowhere to be seen. Nobody knows the right or the correct address of that almighty being called God. And that concept is always based on belief of what others have said. On the other hand, there is no belief of an almighty God in Buddhism. God is outside us, believing in some force, some mighty being, some heaven outside us. In Buddhism, both the hell and the heaven are in us. Not only hell and heaven, even the ultimate goal of Nirvana is in us. Thus, it is clear Buddhism is investigation into ourselves. While other religions are investigations into sayings of others. Who too may <coughs> have not the real experience of an almighty being or his nature or heaven. Religion believe in a heaven that nobody, no ancestor of that religion tradition has experience of seeing. Religion speak of an almighty God that no ancestor of that religious tradition has seen. On the other hand, Buddhism inspires us not only by the Buddha's teaching, by his very behavior. His behavior, even the Buddha himself called Brahmacharya a sublime behavior, holy behavior. In fact, Buddhism is not a religion but a religiousness based on the aspirations or admiration of the Buddha's nature, his behavior and his sayings. Buddha never speak of a dreamy world, a dreamy God or dreamy heaven. All what he uttered could be experienced by us within ourselves. As I mentioned earlier, even the ultimate goal of Nirvana is within us. His entire teaching can be summed up into the four noble truths that he spoke for 45 years. He spoke nothing other than the Four Noble Truths. The Four Noble Truths are suffering, the cause of suffering, cessation of suffering, 
and the technique of such cessation. All those four aspects of the normal truth is in every one of us. For us to realize, for us to experience. To experience the ultimate goal, normally we get in inspired by the Buddha and his enlightened disciples. That inspiration is not a blind faith, not a belief. Beliefs and inspirations are too different. Belief is rootless, based on imagination. Inspiration is based on what you really know. If you know something, there is no need to believe. You believe in God because you don't know God. If you know God, you know not believe in God. If you know the kingdom of God, there is no need for kingdom of God. You know it. In fact, Bible has reported when somebody asks Jesus Christ, show us the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ directly uttered, as reported in the Bible, I can't see, I can't show you the heaven here and there. I can't see, I can't show you the heaven anywhere. The kingdom of God called heaven is nowhere but within yourself. That is what even the Buddha has taught us. To see Nirvana, to see heaven and hell, we had to look into our own mind. In fact, he said, all what we know about our world is within our body that is of six feet. Vyamata Kalebere Panyapi Milokancha, as Buddha said in the Rohitasa Sutta. It means we can only experience not what is outside, but what is reflected by our sense organs in our mind. Mind is a reflector of the world outside, but it is not the world outside, it is only a reflection. It is only a mirror, but that mirror cannot depict the exact nature of the world outside us, because the data supplied by our sense organs about the world outside is limited. I can't the, our eyes can see on a limited range of light waves. Our ears can hear only a limited uh, range of sound waves. Our noses can smell only a limited range of smells. We can't smell even what the dog can do. All our sensory organs are limited in their capacity for experiencing. Therefore, the world that we know is within our mind and that world is not the true picture of the world in which we live. And we can never know the world outside through our sense organs. But we can fully understand the world inside us. To understand that world inside us, we have to observe the world in the, inside us. That is, we have to observe our own mind in action. Mind in action means our thinking. And thinking reflecting, reflected in our speaking. And thinking and speaking reflected in our actions, acting, behavior. Therefore, Buddha advocated Understand the hell and the heaven and the ultimate goal of nirvana within you 
by constant observation they call inside meditation in english and vipassana bhavana in pali inside meditation that is vipassana bhavana is looking into our own mind penetrating our mind there is an inside me not a mere sight not the outer sight see the reflections and see the cause of that reflection for example when we like something there must be a certain cause for our liking something or someone and buddha said there is due to the karma chanda some previous memories hidden in our brain cells make us to like somebody or something for example when we get pleased with something and somebody at the moment the memory of that is retained by our brain and when we see something or someone similar to that we started automatically liking it ultimately with the said it is our thinking that is the real suffering we undergo we suffer because we are thinking we are thinking because we suffer we can suffer both pain and pleasure when we suffer pain we have to think of that pain how to get rid of it when we suffer pleasure when we enjoy it there is a kind of suffering we have to think of ways and means to continue it to prolong it to get it over and over again that pleasure is suffering because whenever we enjoy anything pleasurable we get tired of it we may enjoy playing but we can't play throughout the day we get tired of playing we may enjoy music or dancing or reading or watching tv or watching a drama but ultimately after certain time we get tired of it that means our enjoyment is based on our mental and physical suffering here suffering means use of mental and physical energy thinking is use of mental and physical energy bio energy therefore the first discipline buddha educated to experience the bliss of inner tranquility he had attained from the excess that means abuse of energy excess of energy and that is called prana atipat prana means bio energy atipata means excess there is a certain limit that we can lead use mental and physical energy over using mental energy means getting angry when you are really angry when you are hot it becomes unbearable even love is a source of pain you find it difficult to bear up love you are thinking of getting united with the loud and there are struggle for that even after getting united you get fed up with it ultimately all our experiences lead to suffering and whatever that leads to suffering leads us to thinking thinking ceases only when there is no suffering and that is the enlightenment there is what happened to the buddha at the enlightenment as he uttered in his first appearance of joy saying visankara gatan chitta the thinking process ceased ceasing of the thinking process is really the nirvana the bliss of nirvana no thinking no tiredness caused by thinking the mind is fully awakened no thinking no thinking means no feeling therefore emptiness is called 
Sunyata and Pali meaning wideness, emptiness, empty in the mind. That emptiness is nowhere else but within you. When the mind is empty, you become very pleasant, kind-hearted, full of altruistic joy, equanimity and so on. The qualities that lead us to Nirvana and the qualities that are retained in us after attaining Nirvana are called Brahmacharya, that is sublime behavior. Brahma means sublime, Charya means behavior. This fourfold Brahmacharya sublime behavior is referred to by the Buddha as Metta, Karuna, Buddhita, and Upekka. Metta is altruistic love. Karuna is altruistic compassion. Mudita is altruistic joy. Upekka is equanimity. And that is the state of mind free from attachment, resentment, and ignorance of the realities. Attachment is referred to in the Buddha's language as Raga. Resentment is referred to in his teaching as Dosa. And ignorance of realities is referred to as Moha. Enlightenment is the freedom from Raga, Dosa, Moha. Attachment, resentment, and ignorance. Here, ignorance means inattentiveness. When you attend to you, you know it. I'm hungry and you have the full attention of your anger. You know it. There is no ignorance in it. When you're happy, you can be aware of it. When you're unhappy, you can be aware of it. When you hate somebody, you can be aware of it. That awareness is the freedom from ignorance. When you are aware of the real nature of your mind, full nature, that is called satipatthana, awareness, itself leads to the display, dispelling of all unwanted elements in our mind, elements that are foreign to our mind, attachments in an element foreign to our mind, resentment is an element foreign to our mind, insensitivity is an element foreign to our mind. That means removing all the foreign elements and opening up the pure mind. That is why the Buddhas, all the Buddhas have advised us the purification of our mind. In Buddha's teaching, for 20 years, the first 20 years after his enlightenment was based on a stanza where he said, Sabha papasa karanam kusala supasampada sajitta pariyodapanam etam buddhana sadhana. Buddhana means not my one Buddha, that is the advice of all Buddhas. What is the advice? Don't do anything evil. Abstain from evil. Sabha papa sakarana. What is evil? Whatever that hurts your mind and hurt others are evil. Abstain from being evil, being evil to yourself and being evil to others. Sabha papa sakarana. Then what happens? You become the original nature, kusala supa sampada. When unwholesome elements are removed from the mind, the mind becomes wholesome. The mind becomes pure, pleasant. And sajitta pariyoda panam purify that mind. Why we have to purify it? When the mind is pleasant, you become attached to it. That very attachment it's a foreign element. Atisukha, when there is pleasure, enjoy it without getting attached to it. That is why Buddha said that explaining the nature of a Buddhahood, he said, 
I'm like a lotus in the Drawn Sutta. Drawn Sutta. I'm like a lotus that was born in the muddy water, that has grown up in the muddy water, that is getting sustenance from the muddy water, but live but lives apart from the muddy water without getting polluted by that water. Similarly, I was born in this society, I was brought up by this society, I am being sustained by this society, but I live apart from the society. That is the purity. Society is defiled, but I am maintaining an undefiled mind. I am maintaining the original bliss of my mind. But the Buddha said, can be practiced by us, can be realized by us, and when you realize it, we get a faith on the Buddha, that is of trust on the Buddha, not blind faith, but a realistic faith based on facts and figures and experience. Therefore, we can directly say, Buddha, Buddha never advised blind faith. He was against it. That is what he said in uh, Kalam Sutta. That is what he said in the Vimasa Sutta. Don't believe in, even me, in me. If you cannot logically understand it, if you can really understand it, not on blind faith. Don't believe that I am enlightened unless you realize it through my words, through my action. That is why the Buddha's disciples got inspired by the Buddha and got enlightened like the Buddha. Therefore we can say, Buddhism is not based on blind faith as other religions, but on inspirations based on real experiences. Therefore, we too can get enlightened by being inspired by the Buddha's life that we have read and heard and by inspired by his disciples' life that we have heard and read. We are not following them, but we are practicing in the realizing the Buddhahood in us, the Nirvana in us, the heaven in us, and we are removing the hell within us caused by our ignorance. Enlightenment means the dispelling of that ignorance completely. And we all have the wisdom, the capacity to be enlightened one day. If you are in, inspired by the Buddha's life and teaching and Buddha's disciples and their behavior.